On the 25th of November 1941, the Royal Navy's first battle squadron, consisting of HMS Queen Elizabeth, HMS Valiant and HMS Barham, along with eight destroyers, were on a hunt in the central Mediterranean looking for Italian convoys. Also on the hunt was a German U-boat and their paths were on a collision course. A collision that would send HMS Barham to the floor of the Mediterranean Sea, along with over 800 of her crew. HMS Barham was built for the Royal Navy during the early years of World War I. She was a Queen Elizabeth class battleship, entering service on the 19th of October 1915. The Queen Elizabeth class were a group of five super dreadnoughts built during the 1910s and consisted of HMS Queen Elizabeth, Warspite, Valiant, Malaya and Barham, and they were designed to give the Royal Navy a fast squadron of battleships with more offensive firepower and a speed several knots faster than any other battleship. HMS Barham's keel was laid down on the 24th of February 1913 in Clydebank, and she was launched on the 31st of December 1914. She had a length of 644 feet, a beam of 91 feet and a draft of 33 feet. The waterline of each ship was protected by a belt of Krupp cemented armour some 13 inches thick and upon completion she had a maximum displacement of 33,794 tonnes. Her two sets of brown Curtis steam turbines gave her the power for an average top speed of 24 knots and a range of 5,000 nautical miles. For armament, all the Queen Elizabeth class ships were fitted with eight 15 inch Mark I guns in four twin gun turrets mounted in pairs firing forward and aft. 14 6 inch Mark XII guns, 12 of which mounted along the broadside of the ship and two on the forecastle deck. And two quick firing 3 inch Mark I anti aircraft guns and four submerged 21 inch torpedo tubes. Following successful sea trials, she was ready for action and in early November 1915, she joined the Grand Fleet at Scapa Flow to take part in training west of Orkney. The months that followed saw Barham conducting mainly training or patrolling operations. This would change however in the early summer of 1916. The German High Seas Fleet had devised a plan to lure out a section of the British Grand Fleet and destroy them. But British intelligence had intercepted these plans. Although they knew when the German fleet would sail, they were not entirely sure of the exact nature of the German plans. Because the British knew the German ships would sail on the morning of the 31st of May, the British Admiralty ordered the Grand Fleet, comprising of 28 dreadnoughts and 9 battle cruisers, to sail the night before in an attempt to cut off and destroy the German fleet. The following morning, the German High Seas Fleet consisting of 16 dreadnoughts, 6 pre-dreadnoughts, 6 light cruisers and 31 torpedo boats sailed out of the Jade Bight and into the North Sea. Since dawn break, the British fleet had been scanning the horizons looking for the enemy and it was not until shortly after 2pm that afternoon that light cruiser HMS Galatea spotted two German cruisers that had routinely stopped a Danish merchant ship to check their papers. At 3.30pm, the British finally spotted the High Seas Fleet and they were ordered into position, signalling action stations. And at 3.48pm, the Germans opened fire, immediately followed by the British response. HMS Barham was now right in the centre of the Battle of Jutland. Shortly after 4pm, Barham, at a distance of some 21 kilometres, opened fire on the battlecruiser SMS Von der Tann scoring a direct hit on the battlecruiser's stern. Barham and her sister HMS Valiant were then ordered to switch target and engage the battlecruiser SMS Molke. The first shell struck her belt armour below the waterline, causing significant damage and flooding. Barham and Valiant continued their attack, striking SMS Molke four more times, three hits probably from Barham alone. Shortly before 5pm, Barham came under fire from the battlecruiser SMS Derflinger. One shell penetrated the upper deck and detonated on the main deck, causing substantial damage. Another struck the aft superstructure and severed the antenna cables of the main radio room. During the course of this attack, the entire sick bay was destroyed, killing the staff and its patients. Barham, along with his sister HMS Valiant, continued to engage German battlecruisers until poor visibility brought the day's hostilities to a close. During the course of that afternoon, 
HMS Barham had fired 337 15-inch shells and 25 6-inch shells. And although the number of hits cannot be confirmed, it is believed that Barham and Valiant made 24 hits between them, which made them the most accurate ships of the fleet. The battle, however, cost Barham the lives of 26 of her sailors, with 46 wounded. Following the war, Barham became the flagship of the first battle squadron and would retain this honour for some time, despite the merging of several squadrons over the next few years. During the course of the 1920s, she underwent a series of minor refits, replacing her rangefinders with improved versions and upgrading her anti-aircraft guns with new, quick-firing 4-inch Mark V guns. And in the 1930s, she had extensive refits with structural upgrades, as well as the addition of 1.6-inch Mark VIII pom-pom anti-aircraft guns, as well as replacing the single-mount guns with twin-mount 4-inch Mark XVI guns. Her interwar service was spent largely as part of the Mediterranean Fleet in the 1920s, and later in the Atlantic Fleet, and following her refit of the early 1930s, she once again became part of the Mediterranean Fleet, where she would remain until the outbreak of World War II. On December 10, 1939, Barham was central in a tragic accident. Sailing 14 kilometres off the west coast of the Mull of Kintyre in thick fog, she collided with one of her escort destroyers, HMS Duchess. The destroyer quickly capsized, causing her stored depth charges to explode and killing 134 of her crew. Later that month, on the 28th of December 1939, HMS Barham, along with the battlecruiser HMS Repulse, and a destroyer escort of HMS Fame, Icarus, Imogen, Isis and Nubian, were patrolling in the North Atlantic, northwest of Scotland, looking for German ships that were aiming to break out into the Atlantic. And they were spotted by a German U-boat, U-30, under the command of Fritz Julius Lemp, and he fired four torpedoes. One of the torpedoes struck Barham's port side, killing four and wounding two. The compartments adjacent to the impact point began to flood, and the ship developed a list of some seven degrees before the transfer of fuel oil to be used as ballast stabilised the situation. After being stabilised, Barham was able to limp home under reduced speed and repairs were carried out that lasted until April 1940. In August of 1940, Boren was detached to the Home Fleet, where she took part in the Battle of Dakar, also known as Operation Menace. It was an unsuccessful attempt in September of 1940 to capture the strategic port of Dakar in French West Africa. It was hoped that if successful, they could overthrow the pro-German Vichy French administration and replace it with the Free French. The failed operation caused considerable damage to the Allied fleet, Borum included, and in October she sailed to Gibraltar to undergo repairs. Following repairs, Borum spent a lot of time escorting and providing cover for various operations in the Mediterranean, and in the summer of 1941, whilst covering the evacuation of Crete, she was attacked by Junkers JU-88 and Heinkel A3111 bombers, suffering one direct hit on a gun turret. The attack killed five crew members and wounded six. She sailed to Alexandria in Egypt later that day, but as she was too big for the floating dry dock, she had to sail to Mombasa in Kenya to have her damage assessed. She was eventually sailed to Durban, South Africa for repairs, before returning to Alexandria in August 1941. On the afternoon of the 24th of November 1941, Barham departed Alexandria along with the 1st Battle Squadron of Barham, Queen Elizabeth and Valiant, and an escort of 8 destroyers. They were to provide cover for the 7th and 15th Cruiser Squadrons, who were hunting for Italian convoys moving through the Mediterranean. Early the next day, German U-boat U331, under the command of Hans Diedrich von Thiesenhausen, detected the British ship's presence and plotted an intercept course. Later that afternoon, at 4pm, the ships were in range, and Thiessenhausen ordered his crew to battle stations, and at 4.25pm, at a range of just 375 metres, he fired four torpedoes. Due to the close proximity of the attack, there was no time for any evasive manoeuvres, and three of the four torpedoes hit Barham amidships. The impacts were so tightly grouped that a huge single column of water was thrown into the air. The damage was devastating, and Borum very quickly capsized to port. 
The initial explosions had caused a fire in the 4-inch magazines, and this fire now spread to the main 15-inch magazines. The fire quickly intensified until finally it detonated the entire magazine contents, just four minutes after the initial torpedo impacts. Immediately after the explosion, the remains of HMS Barham quickly sank below the surface, the speed of which meant that there was to be no escape for 862 of her crew. HMS Hotspur rescued 337 survivors, while the Australian destroyer HMAS Nizam rescued 150. The British Board of Admiralty considered the loss of Borum to pose a great risk to British morale, and so the news of the sinking was censored. It even took several weeks before the families of those killed were informed, and even then the families were issued with a special request for secrecy. German radio had been claiming for some time that Borum had been sunk, but it wasn't until the 27th of January 1942 that the Admiralty finally announced the loss of HMS Barham. The crew who died, as well as all those who served aboard her, are remembered in a memorial in North Gardens, in the English town of Weymouth, in Dorset. <laughs>